Now in this lesson, we're going to add more bubbles going at different speeds than others, just like there is in a normal. I know, Martini doesn't have um, bubbles in it, but this is a special universe Martini, and I think it's going to have a lot of bubbles in it. Well, at least nine bubbles. So, tell you what, we're going to go up to our layers here in the bubble we've created. Remember, just refresh your memory. Our bubble went, woo, whoops, way across the screen. There's our preview, or our other preview under control play. A nice, slowly rising bubble. Okay. So, let's click the bubble we want to add a layer on top of. I'm sorry, the layer that we want to add a layer on top of, which happens to be the bubble layer. Insert layer, and we're going to insert 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Nine layers, because I want nine more bubbles. Now, what we're going to do is, under the original bubble layer, we're going to hold Shift down, and then we're going to move... Then click on the layer above it at um, frame 5. Then we're going to hold Alt down and pull it up to there, to frame 5. And then we're going to hold Alt down and pull it up again, five frames ahead, each at a time. And I think I'll delete that top layer. Oh, I didn't realize we had more layers up there. So let's do that again. Click on the initial layer. Hold down Shift. Go up there. A few layers in. I mean, a few frames in. And keep staggering it so. Oops, I didn't hit Alt. So Control z so I'm going to hold Alt and then pull up, Alt, pull up, and that top layer I am going to get rid of. So delete it like so. All right, now we've staggered our layers. So remember, click the first frame, hold Shift down, then move up to the next layer a few frames in, doesn't have to be exact, I picked around five um, frames in, and then that'll select this block, and then you hold Alt, and then keep pulling it up to the next layer, but stagger it, like five frames ahead. So, now, we have copied our bubble layer to eight other layers, but we've scheduled that bubble to start moving at a slightly later time than the rest. So, what I'm going to do is instead of making my keyframe the end for all of these, I am going to make stagger the keyframes for the end also. In other words, if I move the keyframe further back, on these layers, it's going to travel between those points quicker than our original bubble layer, because I want some to travel to the top quicker than others. So I'm just going to pick pick some layers here. Insert keyframe there. Insert keyframe there. I'm just going to stagger them around a bit, so some travel very quickly. Others travel not so quickly. Alright, now let's hide some of these layers. Let's hide the initial bubble layer. I'm actually going to hide all the layers except the one I'm dealing with at the time. So I've already done bubble and I'm going to name this one 
bubble two. I'm going to name this one bubble three and so on and so forth. So let me quickly rename these. Bubble four, bubble five, bubble six, oops, I did two fives, didn't I? Bubble six, bubble seven, and bubble eight. So we have a total of nine bubbles. All right, and I'm going to X out viewing all of them except the original, except the bubble I'm dealing with, and that's this one right here. So I'm going to take this one. I'm going to move it over a little bit to there, and then I'm going to make take my keyframe and move this bubble to the top. Oops. All right, let's try this again. So we've started here and ended here, but I think I can move it up slightly. Uh, that should work fine, actually. Okay, so let's look at the th that path. It is slightly going off to the left, but I don't I don't think it matters. It might actually add to the realism of this animation that it doesn't go straight up, and that it'll mingle with some of the others. All right, so we've copied that tween <laughs> that tween movement or motion into bubble two, except we moved it over to the right a little bit. So now if we viewed both these, it would go like this. Like so. And now we're going to move on to our next bubble. So I'm going to X out the ones I'm not dealing with and only pick the ones I am. So there's the start point. So I'm going to move this one over to there. And now the end point, which is there. I'm going to move it up here, like so. Now, if I go back from the beginning and look at this, it's going to travel up through the middle. All right. Now let's X the view of that one to hide that layer, and let's look at our next layer here. 10. That's our start point, but I'm going to move it over here. And now our keyframe at the end here, I'm going to move it up near the top there. Now let's take a quick preview of it. And it's moving up pretty appropriately. All right, let's X the view of that layer. Now let's go on to our next one, which our keyframe starts at 14. I'm going to move this one over to the end, like so. And now, uh, did I accidentally delete the keyframe for this one, or did I not? ever add it. Well, either way, let's add our keyframe here. And so we've begun there. We've ended there. So I'm just going to move it straight up like so. All right, now I'm going to hide that layer. And now I'm going to grab this keyframe in the beginning here. And I'm going to move this one almost near the end. And now I'm going to pick the keyframe at the end here and move it to the top. Now I'm going to hide this one. I'm just doing basically the same thing 
on all of these. And then this one I'm going to put at the very end. And then create my keyframe. Actually, pretty far back. I'm going to make it here. And then I'm going to move it to the top. Not perfectly straight up and down, but pretty close. And then let's pick our last one, which we'll unhide. And let's just use this one. Let's put it in the middle because I've filled up most of the spaces on the side. And then our keyframe at the end. I'll just put this one at the top here, like so. All right. Now that we are done, let's take a look if we preview through. Oh, I have to unhide all of these again. Pardon me. The reason I hid them, except for the one I was dealing with, because all of these started in the same spot, I could have accidentally grabbed another bubble from another layer and it would have messed me up. That's why a lot of times it is useful to hide all the layers except the one you're working with. Alright, so from the beginning, let's see how this would go. Ah, see? See how some of them went quicker than others? Alright, now we can actually play it through the control panel. Alright. Now, just to show you, um, you do understand that concept of me making the tweening over a shorter amount of frames makes it travel between those points quicker. That's why some of the bu bubbles traveled up quicker than others and others longer than others. And I started them at different frames, so that's why they didn't all start at the same time. Now, you notice that what I did is when I was on a particular layer, I would grab it and actually pull it to a different spot. By the time I was at the keyframe, I would pull it to a different endpoint. But if you want to fine tune it, for instance, you click on on the symbol that you've created it into, which is a graphic now. And you notice here under the properties panel, we have our XY positions. 281.7 by 129.8. And I'll show you in the next lesson how we can use these XY coordinates in conjunction with our rulers and grid lines. So, there you go with the bubbles.